And at the back you can see... Uh... Oh, wait. This car has two engines, guys. The only car in the world with two engines. Uh, amazing car. Two engines means two different power outlets. There's a big reason why I made that. Because I wanted to inform, I wanted to convey this message to people like anyone who talks about cars doesn't have to be a car person. See, being a car person is a respectful, prestigious thing. Someone like you, who spent almost a good period of his life into cars, in the oil. Like you smell like oil of the car more than you smell of perfume, right? Someone like you, for example, I respect you and I accepted to do this interview with you because I respect the kind of car guy you are. So, if someone who doesn't have his hand dirty, who hasn't changed a nut or a bolt in his life, comes to talk about engines, comes to talk about car bodies and frames and makes and brands and doesn't know anything when I ask a question. Who are you? What are you doing? Trying to bring people to your attention? Trying to make, trying to grow YouTube channels by saying shit that you don't know? Or trying to be that in, in a community where you will be considered to be a car person? That's hypocrisy. So there are people I've met, like I've met really people who are like uh, inspired me with this stuff and people who have lived a lot and who have spent and who have cried and who have struggled and who have been through a lot of issues and a lot of times you have been uh, confiscated, you have been into uh, pro troubles with the cops and so many things. Uh, and then comes these uh, millennials uh, with uh, no idea about what they are talking about. They make videos and they put it up and they put a clickbait thumbnail like you don't deserve to do that bullshit. If you put a thumbnail you have to stand up for it. That's why I made that video. So in car meets it kind of meet all the kind of people but then today the world is kind of like getting softer. So we are politically correct now. We can't really say anything against people. We can't offend them. So we gotta let them do what they want. But at the same time, you don't have to be sitting quiet. So I made a video like that to generalize, not to point my fingers at someone specific. <laughs> but without pointing fingers, I had to do this awareness kind of thing that don't believe what you see online. You know what happens? As you, saw, as you said, like you gave an example of a guy who spent a lot of money of his dad, of all his money, uh, doing stuff that he didn't know what was going on. So how much money did he spend? Like 25,000 minimum or more than that. What was the waste for? Because he didn't have information about the modifications, right? So if someone who looks at these videos, like normal videos of these people talking like high stuff which they don't have an idea about, people be tend to believe it. Because the internet is a place where lies are shown in very different ways. It could be a guy talking truth but his production is not that great. But there's a guy who talks shit and his production is great. Like his videos are like high quality and stuff. So we would go to believe that guy because his videos look better. So that thing has to be changed. So this this is what I said when I met people like different kind of people. I kind of read them right away, but I don't tell them that you are, you are this, you are that because let them live. But my message is not to believe what you see about cars on the, on the internet. Meet people who have actually been through cars from the exhaust till the radiator, who knows everything. That's that's my idea about people I met in these short shows. All right, so uh, muscle, JDM and German. Okay, first of all, I'll cancel the muscle out. Why? I don't believe in so much power and no control. That's, that's a bull engineering. Bull has a lot of energy inside him, right? He can like charge at you, hit you and cause little like lethal damage. What if he misses you? He'll go hit a wall and he'll die, right? So an American car, no offense. I'll take for example, the Hellcat 707. When I say 707, oh my god, I have 707 horsepower under my bonnet. Why? What are you going to do with it? Make biryani and eat it? Nothing. You're not going to do shit with that. And if you don't know how to control the car, I, I see kids getting bought these cars. Like their dads give them the gift, like 707, take it. If he doesn't know how to drive the car, he'll end up dying. He'll end up crashing into people. Mustangs, why do they keep crashing? Why do you keep seeing videos of Mustangs going off tracks and killing people? The crowd killer that we, <laughs> we call it the crowd killer. Why? Because the car has been given so much power, the Americans, they think like, you know, putting so much power into it is like, their, that's their thing. So, uh, you can do it for drifting, it's a good car, you can do power slides in that, that's good. But, to use, yeah, to use it, that's the only thing that's good in them. I don't saying that that's the, only, that's the best thing in that, but the only thing I could do is like, kind of drift in that sometimes. And it's loud. It sounds like a loud bull. I don't respect it. It's like a stupid car. So much power, but stupid. So, I kind of take that out. I don't like that that the flamboyance of that uh, the USA kind of thing, which they have so much power and so much sound but no control. Take it out. That's not engineering for me. Now the tough choice: Japanese and German. I have both of them. Uh, I can't say one. Right. So German. I'll tell you about the cars first. So German is very intelligent, 
very safe. I feel, I feel very protected inside the German car. I don't have to worry about anything. For example, the Golf I have is all wheel and it's uh, right now it's 320 horsepower. I wouldn't mind taking an exit at 120, a tight exit. I would take it at 120 because I know the car will hold it because that's the kind of traction it has. You can't take an exit at 80 in a Mustang. You'll die. You know that. Everyone knows that. So I have reliability. I bought my life protection because it's an important thing. I would happily choose a German for daily driving, but that's not the end of my life. The fun is not there in the German. I don't have the fun, seriously. Uh, they cut out a lot of things in my life. That's like, that's like living inside a city. You have all the facilities, but you can't see the stars because there's light pollution. So that's a German car. They cut out a lot of things, but they give you a lot of things. So I can't say no to that. It's like a parent protecting you, but not giving you everything. A Japanese is like a spoiled mom. You're a mother that is rich and gives you every kind of fun. So in a Japanese car, you can use it for daily drive. You can use it for track events and you can use it for the sounds that you like to hear. So looking at all of those, I think I'll go for JDM because JDM is where I started my passion. It was in German. Well, R34 is one of the cars that I would choose, but since I'm a little more into technology because I study that and I, I try to do a little bit of robotics in my life, I make stuff, I kind of got really impressed, like really impressed with the R35, the GTR R35, because I would like a car that has launch control because I like that rush I get when I launch the car. But the classic feeling is not there in an R35 and the transmission. So if I had to choose one, R34, but our next generation, the kids were growing up looking at us, they'll be like moving into electrical cars. Uh, being an environmentalist and uh, someone who studies en environment and atmosphere and everything, I would actually support electric cars looking at the future of the planet. But do you hear that? That fun that you have from that wouldn't be there in electrical cars. The sound, that feel, that won't be there. So I should say, I support it, but it should be balanced. It shouldn't be like complete revolution of the industry of the car machines. It should be a fine balance between petrol combustion and electric cars. Hybrid is a good idea, but hybrid is kind of expensive for people to own. Or they can convert their cars into hybrid like taxis that we have today. But it shouldn't be like you have to buy an electric car. But now they are, since they are imposing like things like, for example, if you have an electric car, you have free salik, you have free parking, you have free charging. These things are like very attractive to people. And I would like to own a Tesla someday. Because owning a Tesla is not just about uh, having an electric car. Because Tesla is not just normal electric car. BMW, has, BMW had a hydrogen car. They had electric cars. But those are like average electric cars. Tesla is different.